In this video, we're going to take a look at application of surface area and volume. For our first example, Abigail has a cylindrical candle mold shown below. She has a rectangular block of wax measuring 12 centimeters by 15 centimeters by 18 centimeters. How many candles can Abigail make using the wax and her mold? And how much wax will be left over, if any? So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight that they've given me a rectangular block of wax measuring 12 centimeters by 15 centimeters by 18 centimeters and then that is not drawn in the picture but that would look like a rectangular block of wax and then 12 by 15 by 8 so i'm gonna put let's just put 12 by 15 by 18 not 8 and then to find the volume of that we just need to do length times width times height or the area of a rectangular prism is considered the area of the base times the height. But then the base of a rectangular prism is the rectangular base. So that's where I got length times width. Because that's the area of a rectangle. So now let's put it together. We have 12 times 15 times 18. And so the volume of our block of wax would be a total of 3,240 cubic centimeters when I calculate all that together. All right, so now I need to find the volume of one candle mold. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height. So let's calculate pi. The radius they gave me is 3.4 centimeters. So I'm going to square that and then multiply it by the height. And so the volume of one candle I've calculated is 217.9 cubic centimeters. So now we need to figure out how many candles can Abigail make? That was the first question. And then how much wax is left over, if any, is the second question. So let's take the total amount of wax we have, which is 3,240, and divide it by how much it takes per candle, which is 217.9. And since both of those are cubic centimeters, we can just divide. And we get that that would be 14.87 candles. But we can't have part of a candle, so we could only say that we could make 14 candles, and then we would have some leftover wax. So to figure out the leftover wax, we need to say 217.9 times 14, which would be 3,050.6 cubic centimeters is how much it takes to make those candles, the 14 candles. And then we just need to subtract that from our total amount of wax to figure out the leftover amount of wax. So I'm gonna find a little space in here. So 3,240 minus the 3,050.6 would have a leftover amount of 189.4 cubic centimeters of wax left over. So that's left over and we can make 14 candles so we have answered both questions that we were asked. All right, let's look at example two. Bob would like to stain the new bookcase he bought for his college dorm room. He needs to stain the left and right side along with the top and the back twice. Now that word twice is very important, so let's highlight that. So we're gonna stain the left and the right side, the top and the back, so not the front. And it wants to know what is the area of the space he will be staining. So we're finding surface area this time. So let's get organized. We want the left and the right, which are the same size, because this is the left side if you're looking at the shelf. And then that right side over here is going to be the same size as the left. And they've given us that it is inches or centimeters, but centimeters is typically easier to work with. So the left and the right is going to be 23.7 times, because we just want length times width. And see over here, the height of it is 100, here's the height, 181.6 centimeters. And so that is for the surface area. So let's put area is 23.7 times 181.6. So let's calculate 23.7 times 181.6 and we get 4,303.92. And then that would also be for the right side. 
So let's just jot that down again because it would be the same thing for the left and the right. Then we need the top and the back. Now they are not the same size. The top of the shelf is up here. I'm going to put it in red. And let's get organized over here and say the area of the top of the shelf would be the same width as that left and right side. So the 23.7 would apply. But then along this side, we need to get this measurement that's down here at the bottom, which is 62.7 centimeters. Okay, so let's calculate the area of the top. 23.7 times 62.7 is 1485.99. So let's say 1485.99. And then that's the top. And now we need the back. So the back of this shelf is similar to the front. The front and the back would be the same. So it's hard to highlight the back. So I'm just going to kind of highlight the front. And then let's write that one out. So the back, oops, let me get a pen. The back, the area of the back would be this bottom side again, which is the 62.7 times this height of the whole thing, which was 181.6. Okay, so we just need like length and width again because it's just a rectangular side, even though it's the back. So 62.7 times 181.6 gives us 11,386.32. Okay, so we have the left... Let's double check we got everything. We've got the left and the right side, the top and the back. But twice means we've got to do all of that two times. So let's put all of that together, total it up, but don't forget to multiply it by two. And so let's just add, oops, excuse me, let's add all that together. So 4,303.92. And then we had two of those plus 1485.99 plus 11,386.32. I get a grand total of 21,480.15. Then times that by two, and I get 42,960.3. And then area for each one of these were centimeters. An area is always squared. So let's add in some units. So all of these were square centimeters, and the total would also just be square centimeters. So that is the area of the space he will be staining. Surface area. Okay. Let's do one more example. The imaginary toy company has increased their size of the creativity doll. The packaging department has calculated that they need to add three inches to each of the dimensions of the original packaging, and the original is shown in the picture. What is the new amount of cardboard needed to package one doll? So if this is the new packaging pictured here, we just need to add three inches to each dimension, and then it looks like it's a box in the picture, which is like a rectangular prism. So a rectangular prism... Let me try to sketch it a little bit better. Is any prism is the volume is the area of the base times the height. And the base is a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is length times width. So that's why the volume for any box is going to be length times width times height. Now, they want to know what is the new amount of cardboard needed to package the doll. So actually, if we're looking at packaging, we're looking at the surface area. So let's actually take that back. We want the surface area. And so the surface area of a rectangular prism, we can even look back at our good formula sheet over here and see surface area for any prism is two times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. So let's start with our formula. Two times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. So two times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. So big B, let's write over here, is area of our base, which in this case is a rectangle. 
So that is going to be length times width. And then the little p is the perimeter of the base. So we'll just need to add all the sides of the rectangle. So I'm just going to jot those down over here on the side. Add the sides of the base. OK, so surface area, 2 times the area of the base. So the area of this base looks like 3, but we're going to add 3 to it. So that's a new side of 6. And then 5 plus 3 will be 8. So we have 8 times 6 plus the perimeter of the base. So that'll be 8, 8, 6, and 6. So 8 plus 8 plus 6 plus 6 gives us, let's see, 16 plus 12 is 28 times the height, which is the 10 plus 3, which is 13. Okay. So now let's just calculate all of that. So 2 times 8 times 6 plus 28 times... 13. And we get a grand total of 460 square inches. So that is the new amount of cardboard needed to package one doll. All right, so that's it for our three examples on application of surface area 